back again with another quick update of the uh, build vlog. Uh, finally starting to look like a motorcycle properly in that uh, it's, uh, although I've got it on stands, it's up on its wheels. And uh, things turned out well this week in that uh, I was able to, let's see, talk to the machinist on Tuesday. Of course, he's all apologetic because he didn't get uh, to uh, machining the swing arm spindle and you know, no problem, no problem. Any chance you can get it done for uh, Thursday because uh, yesterday was uh, Easter Friday and I uh, wasn't at work and he was able to get it done. So uh, starting at the back then. So these are the monster uh, uh, S4R rear sets that I got uh, from overseas. And so the the longer monster rear swing arm sort of acts as an outrigger. So the they're bolted here, but then um, it's sort of like a little little helper um, that this sits on the uh, the swing arm pivot that sits proud of each side of the en engine case, and it's very um, tricky, uh, especially when you're modifying and adapting. And this isn't uh, an S4R engine, but the thing is, this cap here uh, shouldn't be uh, exerting too much pressure on this rear set plate because, of course, the swing arm pivot is bolted solid to the swing arm and the bearings are actually in the case. So if you could uh, watch it as the, as the swing arm goes up and down, this turns slightly because you don't want it, um, you don't want it not turning. It's supposed to be solid inside the swing arm pivot, but not, um, I guess, grinding away at the outer piece of that, um, of that rear set plate. But Anyway, it uh, it uh, uh, this one this side works well. Pretty tight clearance here, but uh, I'm confident that a uh, brake uh, banjo fitting will fit here, and then run to the rear uh, brake uh, caliper that I've got on here. Um, this was a bit of a, a, a fail. I saw this uh, rear brake um, uh, rotor here, and you know it is it is a Chinese thing as these often are. But, um, you know, oh, that looks really light and it must be lighter than, than the stock one because the stock one's pretty heavy and it really isn't. It's a bit thicker, <laughs> believe it or not. And uh, even with, uh, with the holes and the, and the relief and, and the pedal uh, design, it's, it's, I don't think it's any lighter than the, um, than the stock rotor. But I've got a backup stock rotor in case I do, you know, get serious enough to the point where I'm running a... A second set of uh, wheels on this thing. Um, so yeah, that's the the uh, passenger or sorry the right hand side and the, the see that the brake uh, plunger here works. I had to fabricate this a bit longer. Um, this is just a, a extra Allen bolt that I had M6 here, and then uh, had to sort of taper the end to properly fit inside the plunger. So so that works the way it should. Um, what else? Uh, so yeah, I've got these uh, snugged up properly now. Um, now that I've got the, the swing arm pivot in, you've got the rear exhaust system in. Uh, after I'm done this video, I'll actually loosen off the rear and the front headers at the exhaust manifold. I do need to take this piece off here. You can see that the, I checked that the springs line up. Um, this is going to, uh, to go with me because uh, in a crazy quick t turnaround, uh, Cone Engineering, I decided to go with them for one of these 15 inch megaphone exhausts. This is full stainless steel. I've used their stuff before, uh, great quality, and this is uh, an end run. They're not gonna make these anymore. So they happen to have a, uh, I'm not sure well you can see that, a two and a quarter um, inlet here. Um, I think it was about 140 bucks US. So yeah, shipping wasn't cheap, and of course UPS need to take their cut. But the main reason why is that um, this here, uh, I'll take it to the muffler shop, and they can just uh, the the OD of this and the OD of this is identical. So for them to take their little uh, exhaust pipe uh, expander hydraulic tool and open it up just a bit so it slips over, um, I think. I'll have it slide basically all the way down, I think, because uh, it should still clear here. Like, it's like so, it is going to stick out slightly, but uh, you know, it would need to be longer and go like that if it uh, if it didn't. But um, yeah, I think I'll I'll trim a bit off here, so that when this thing slides down, it goes it goes all the way to uh, 
to there. So I'll probably take a good, you can see it a good inch off the, um, the end of the titanium pipe and uh, mock up a, uh, a muffler bracket probably coming off of here, I think, um, you know, down like that. And then I'll get uh, Brent, because Brent can do this. Uh, it's at um, Ironcraft, he'll, he'll fabricate a stainless steel bracket onto here, and then um, the muffler will be on. It won't be the uh, quietest thing, because yeah, well, it has some de decent length. There's not a huge amount of um, packing in there, but it'll do some muffling as it, as it should. And kind of look period correct, like with that sort of um, megaphone uh, style to it, rather than you know an aftermarket uh, traditional round uh, exhaust. I don't think it would uh, work too well. And the other thing too is there's a bit of a tight clearance here, so the megaphone tapered design here, um, you know, as it as it comes on, kind of uh, kind of gives you that extra little clearance on the swing arm. So granted, this will be down probably about there. Um, and then yeah sticking sticking out slightly but it's certainly not going to hit um, <laughs> if the muffler is touching down then everything else is touching down so so yeah I'll take that piece off and then when I can I'll stop by the muffler shop and I've got this sort of uh, uh, it, it takes them literally 15 to 20 seconds to do it because of course they've got the hydraulic tool the hydraulic tool probably cost them I don't know, thousands of dollars. So uh, they don't charge me anything when I do it, but I always bring them a box of donuts, which is uh, sometimes the best way to uh, to pay for things. So that will uh, go on and I'll work, look at uh, coming up with a muffler bracket of some sort. There's some neat ones that in, um, in, J in Japan that I've seen again on that uh, Japanese auction site that I think might be uh, might be a good uh, a good solution um, you know aluminum bracket uh, varying lengths and that sort of thing has a bit of a, a style to it I guess for lack of a better term so anyway that's that put that back in here ready to go um, did some more work actually on the wiring loom I think I explained in the last uh, vlog that uh, this is this is again way too long. <laughs> But it's uh, this is to be wired direct to the battery, um, so that means that the original wiring piece that had um, you know a big 40 amp fuse and and for some reason two positive leads, two negative leads. I double checked, triple checked. They didn't go anything else. I cut that out of the wiring loom, which uh, which simplifies things. I don't know what I. It was just some extra wire that I had lying around. One of my jobs today too, by the way, in case dad's watching this, he's probably shuddering. Yes, I will clean up this mess. <laughs> now that I have no more work to do on the bike, I'll, uh, I'll clean up the garage a bit. Maybe turn on some lights here too, so you can see. But yeah, I, I, time is limited. So I get into this bad habit of work on the bike, work on the bike, work on the bike. Oh crap, I gotta go do something else. And you know, make sure that there's nothing on fire, or there's you know, nothing that's that's going to cause issues. And then I kind of just leave it. So, not I understand not the best way to run a shop, but uh, for the record, I've seen dirtier shops than this. Um, so I've started to second guess this solution. I you know uh, I, I went online um, getting back to the wiring harness. And uh, one of the, the Cafe Racer uh, custom bike um, websites had of like Motorcycle Wiring 101, and it's based in the States. And depending on what state you're in, I think you could probably duct tape a flashlight to your handlebars and that counts as a headlight. So there, there are rules around turn signals and brake lights and that sort of thing is far more liberal. But anyway, uh, when they talked about wiring you know, a bike, and granted they have more power running through it with brake light, uh, tail light, that sort of thing. They talked about this ignition switch or the on off switch being um, 30 amps. So when I originally said I think that should be able to to, to do 20 amps because it originally ran um, an on off switch and, uh, and a starter switch through it, I think what I'll do is I'll actually move away from this. It'll be a good spare switch to have. And in this little hole, um, Napa Auto has a Grote, G-R-O-T-E, 20 amp rocker switch. Um, so then I think I'll put that here and then the extra little toggle switch I have for the tack, I'll mount somewhere around here. So it'll be a two-step and that 
that'll be the ignition and then that'll be for the uh, for the tax so there's not any draw on the battery it is we're talking milliamps but uh, for for track bikes that are only used once a month uh, you got to make sure that you're not uh, you're not draining your very expensive lithium-ion battery so uh, that's that um, again if you've seen some of my earlier vlogs when this was going to be a, a Panta um, so this is the front brake uh, uh, solution so what it is it's it's the 675 wheel I've got an aftermarket this rotor was a hundred bucks like there was only one and it normally comes with two so I think the seller was just trying to clear out the warehouse of of things that he was gonna have a hard time matching so I should certainly took that um, brand new rotor 675 caliper uh, these are actually some titanium 12 point uh, um, uh, caliper bolts that I had lying around and a little spacer here and there you go that's the that's the um, front uh, rotor solution I'm not even 100% sure yeah I do I wondered if I actually needed these spacers but I think if you don't have the spacers in here the top of the caliper will foul on the um, on the rotor I think originally it was like a hundred and oh, sorry 300 millimeter rotors and these are 320s or 310s so there's there's a bit of spacing that uh, that needs to be done uh, carburetors are still off uh, waiting on my uh, rebuild kit to come it's on its way from uh, Frank MX parts in the Netherlands. Um, I was able to um, start to split the uh, the carburetors because um, they're they're racked and uh, you know again no real easy diagrams to figure out how to split them. But uh, I've I've done some digging and, and figured it out. So they're not totally split. They're they're about ready to come across. The two new O rings will go in the fuel T that connects the two float bowls, and also um, there's a carb overflow. Uh, rail that uh, the uh, they're not even o-rings they're u-rings uh, that totally failed uh, the the u-rings came apart in pieces they're like plastic so I got I got replacement ones of those too so so yeah kind of happy with how tidy this orientation is um, nice out of the way um, again this part of the tank is going to be removed so the carburetors can fit still plenty of of capacity there for the uh, for the amount of fuel you run in a sprint race uh, around to this side so yeah a bit of a I'll call it a problem I don't know what but uh, the shift lever here the way it's designed um, it was originally designed to work on a monster probably with the peg down a bit lower and this setup on a street shift so with the shift arm sitting uh, in this orientation of course it's a race bike and I prefer GP shift which is one up and five down but in this case four down because it's a five speed um, so if I had the shift arm up like this the rod fouled on the bottom of, of uh, this piece and of course it was the wrong length so uh, I, I could uh, do some work and bolt a bracket to the shift rod uh, sorry the shift lever and then monkey with some um, thread taps and make a longer thread rod but of course over the years I've got uh, left-handed quarter inch right-handed quarter inch left hand m6 right hand m6 male rose joints female rose joints I could certainly put something together if I if I mixed and matched but I think what I'll do is I'll just run a um, a reverse GP shifter arm right off of uh, this so uh, uh, SSR manufacturing makes a nice one um, that I'll uh, that I'll be able to use and, and run off here so it'll probably sit you know like this and work like so so yeah that's uh, that's that solution there and um, yeah got the uh, got the rear uh, the shock reservoir mounted here that'll that'll work well in that orientation uh, clears everything here uh, including the, the rear uh, exhaust header so so yeah that uh, that's where we're at right now so it was a pretty uh, long day uh, my wife thought I might have fallen asleep or died in the garage I was in here I think I ended up being in here for six hours straight but you kind of get into that uh, zone, you know, where you where you want to, um, 
you know, spend a lot of time doing things and, uh, and uh, you know, when new parts come in. So it's kind of nice to have uh, have that opportunity. And, um, you know, again, it still isn't warm, it's still bloody cold, but uh, spring has got to be coming one of these days. Uh, so hopefully, not that I'll be riding this anytime soon, but this, the happy face KTM Duke um, out on the, on the street soon. So anyway, that's the update for now. And uh, yeah, as things develop and parts come in, I'll keep updating um, the vlog and uh, like and subscribe.